What if you got a call one day saying that you may be related to Anne Frank? Oh, and by the way, you have an entire family that you never even knew existed. Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's exactly what happened to me, and this is how it started. The pendant belonged to a girl called Caroline Cohn. Carolina Cohen. There's a young Jewish girl named Caroline Kohn. Carolyn Kahn, who was born on the date and in the city. On January 15th, a series of stories broke out across international news. A pendant had been found in the Sobibor concentration camp. It turns out it was identical to Anne Frank's pendant. That pendant belonged to a little girl named Carolina Cohen. Carolina was from Frankfurt, Germany, just like my grandfather and his family. My grandpa Martin M. Katz had always talked proudly about his Frankfurt German roots, but just three days before this story broke, he passed away. Fast forward now to January 16th, I had to fly back to Israel from the United States where I had just been by my grandfather's side. I'm a total mess. So the next day I get back to the news studio where I'm just convinced that going back to work is going to help me take my mind off of everything. And lo and behold, I end up covering this story about Anne Frank. There's been a stunning find of a pendant historians believe may have once belonged to a Holocaust victim related to the famed Anne Frank. Hi, Chaim. Hey, Carolina Cohen is my grandfather's cousin then. So Carolina's father, Richard, yeah. was first cousin of Max Katz. No. <laughs> That's Chaim Motzen. He saw the story on the news and decided to use his incredible research skills to trace Carolina Cohen's family. And it turns out Carolina Cohen's grandma was my great-great-great-grandfather's sister. 27 relatives from around the world are flying in to come to the event. So this is why I am now speaking to you from Frankfurt, Germany where I'm about to meet dozens of long-lost family members that I had no idea ever existed. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're cousins through the, uh, the mother. That's Cynthia and that's Jackie Bruckman. We're third cousins twice removed. You lived in the same neighborhood as me in Brooklyn from what years? We may have been sitting next to each other in the same cafe. <laughs> and that's my cousin Sonia Kunkel. Uh, we're very we're very happy for our children and uh, you've got to meet them. They're, no, I have to meet them. They're your cousins, yeah. And, and they're my age too, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. And this cousin of mine, Krista Nelson, might have been the most thrown off by this entire story. Did you know that you had a Jewish background before this? Absolutely not until I received a phone call from Haim in April. And that's my grandpa's third cousin, Ernie Heinemann. Welcome to our home. Our home. Ernie was born. He's a Holocaust survivor. He was born in Germany, but he had to escape from the Nazis when he was just a toddler. We're having our morning coffee before we go out. We're going to Weinheim to Hauptstrasse to see the place where dad was born and where the family lived for many generations until they were forced to sell the house um, during the war. You know, for me, losing my grandfather this year was very uh, tough. So I'm excited yeah. to meet Opa. Yeah. <laughs> my new granddaughter. Exactly. <laughs> my, my, our grandfather's upholstery store business, and my father used to work with him. And this would have been your store. This is where you would have grown up. Well, I if the circumstances would have been different. Much, much different. We were very lucky in a sense that we survived because we had a lot of incidents where we wouldn't be, be here, we would be with, with Carolina right now. And this is a great honor having all these new cousins and new friends I have here and these extra, extraordinary people researching our, our lives. The pendant that we find, we find it very close to the cutting hair barrack and undressing barrack. At just 14 years old, Carolina was stripped and shaven, and then sent to the Sobibor gas chambers, murdered, along with her entire family. Probably, the pendant of Carolina Cohen fell between the two beams of the wood of the floor of this barrack. This is the location of the last home that Carolina Cohen and her family voluntarily lived in. 
Was it an accident or an act of defiance? I like to think, or should I say we like to think, that Carolina took back control in her final moments of life. Her pendant left behind to reunite her family. Say family. Family! family.